was on a sunny summer day, the Jolly Rover put to sea, loaded with a couple of the strangest fishermen you ever saw. As a matter of fact, they're out looking for soup. Now, who'd ever expect to find a bowl of soup out here in the ocean? Well, you never can tell. There she blows, quick Watson the harpoon, and he misses. Only one thing to do now, peel off the shirt and go after him with a rope. A vast me hearties, full speed astern. What a way to go fishing. Man, oh man, for just a bowl of soup, this fellow is kicking up a lot of commotion. Ride him, cowboy. Don't let him throw you. And here comes the soup. He's even bringing along his own bowl. Old hard shell himself, at least 200 years old. Much too old and dignified to appreciate all the excitement. But he's not nearly as harmless as he looks. The fishermen keep well out of the way of those heavy jaws ready to snap at anything that gets close enough for him to reach. 285 pounds, well into the heavyweight class, as a wrestler. So it's home again, with a cargo of turtle meat and enough tortoise shell for a boatload of spectacles. But it takes a derrick to get this double-decked sea beast ashore. Steady there, or it's down to the sea again for old man turtle. Turning turtle is a trick in itself, especially when the turtle is equipped with a pair of 10-inch jaws. And that makes this automobile the only one in existence with a double turret top. If I'd listened to Mama, I wouldn't be in this mess. And away he goes. He'll be seeing you in a nice warm bowl of turtle soup. <laughs> is here to stay, at least in the city of Detroit, where working like a horse involves a certain amount of luxury. Breakfast in a quiet nook, a personal servant to complete the morning's dress, and then off to a busy day's work in the midst of city traffic. But getting off to work is just so much horseplay to these animals, for here is the last word in horsey transportation, a stable on wheels, a limousine that caters exclusively to sleek animals of the police force. To the office, Patrick. And please spare the horses. With this new kind of transportation, it's just a question of putting the cart around the horse and rolling softly away to a hard day's work. Of course, you can always depend on a police officer to signal correctly for a right-hand turn. So begins another day for Dobbin, who's in the best of health and chipper as a colt. The modern horse cart unloads with master at the reins, ready once more to pick up the job of untangling traffic. And in the middle of crowded city streets, the trained police animal calmly looks over the hurrying lines of traffic. A perfect picture of real horse sense. The line forms on the... What kind of a show is this? Now, here's the way to get out of a sand trap, depending, of course, on which way you're going. Or you can play him alley-oop. The pitcher hollers alley when he shoots, and the catchers on top holler oop whenever they miss. But they don't miss often with such fancy pitching. The beginner keeps both eyes on the ball. The golf instructor does the same, if possible. And, well, it's not a bad business to be in at times. He learned this one knocking winding weights off cuckoo clocks. But don't let him fool you. There's a trick to it, even with practice. This one is not recommended for beginners. If you must try it, be sure the car has a stabilized front end. You'll need it. Without, you're apt to wind up playing ostrich in the sand. Here's another simple little trick, providing you can get somebody to hold the ball. Always use a wooden leg for practice. Try it for size, and while you're at it, you might as well try this one. <laughs> At the edge of the Texas panhandle, the good earth has turned to dust. Soil that once grew wheat now clots the highways, drifting in smothering clouds, choking every green and living thing. But a man-made war against the creeping dust is now underway. Men and machines dig into the earth in the fight for water. Armies of well drillers are moving across the dust-driven plains to bring relief for thirsting crops. Ditches are scraped out. The dust-bitten earth opens to the flow of water from hundreds of wells, operated by sturdy automobile engines. 
pumping 1,200 gallons of water every minute, day and night, with never a stop, day in and day out, week after week. And every time another cloud of dust sweeps in from the horizon, there's plenty of need for the air cleaner that keeps that stifling cloud out of the engine. Once again, wheat begins to cover the plains, giving promise of another victory over the elements. Acres of musty, lifeless soil are transformed. Rich black earth made possible by water, enough to supply the needs of dried up farms of the Dust Bowl. Where the dust now creeps in stifling drifts, soon there will be seas of waving wheat fields. Man and soil, parched for want of water, are finding relief in tiny man-made rivers. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. We're bringing you this pussy weight championship fight direct from the ringside. Both fighters are already in the ring, and the crowd is restless. This broadcast is being brought to you through the courtesy of the Quality Catnip Corporation, makers of that crispy, crinkly, crunchy catnip kiddies crave. Both fighters are sitting quietly in their corners. Neither one shows the anxiety that's written beneath his furrowed brow. It won't be long now, folks. The gentlemen of the press are writing at top speed. There's the bell. Both fighters are starting slow. There they go. Now they're out in the center of the ring, and they're mixing it up. Plenty. Man, oh man, what a fight this is going to be. Gus leads to right, then ducks a low blow to the midsection. Oh, Gus got in a left hook that shook Butch clear down to his heels. Now Gus lands a right, and a left, and a right. Butch is crouching. He's waiting for a chance at that famous right hook. Look out. Oh, he missed by a whisker. Now they're out in the center of the ring again. They're trading punches. One, two, one, two. They're hard at it, slugging each other with rights and lefts and rights and lefts. What a battle. There, Gus got in another right to the whiskers. And another, and a left, and a right. And Butch comes back with a left, and another left, and a right. Oh, it won't be long now. There it is, there it is. Gus is down. Butch rushes to a neutral corner. There's the count. Two, three. Butch is trying to get on his feet. Four, five. He's still making a supreme effort. Six, seven. He pulls himself up onto the ropes. Eight, nine. He can't make it. Ten, and out. The winner. A new world's pussyweight champion. Yeah.